get a check of your top stories this morning because we may be enjoying some of the fall like temperatures, at least some people, but other Midwest states not quite as lucky. Look in South Dakota, buried in a blizzard blanket this morning. That's a lot of snow. Heavy snow, freezing rain, strong winds lasted throughout the night, making it a dangerous trip for people traveling back from the holidays. Now, Back here in Minnesota, cold weather businesses are struggling this with, uh, with this wild, mild winter weather. The unusually warm December has delayed the fun for many seasonal businesses. At least seven ski areas across Minnesota and western Wisconsin were shut down yesterday because of warm temperatures and rain damaging their snow. Most plan to reopen today or later this week. Our Pauline Lee joins us live with how people are trying to stay positive. Pauline. Hey, yeah, that's the key. So many are still holding out hope that this year. Winter fun is not all lost, so that the cold temperatures are hopefully still on their way. It is winter break for a lot of students, which is typically the busiest time of year for Highland Hills ski area in Bloomington, but right now it's only at about 25% capacity. Its most recent rainfall melted about a foot and a half of snow. Over in Maple Grove, half a dozen hockey rinks still have yet to be able to open because of the warm weather, but there's still some fun to be had. The Central Park Skating Loop in Maple Grove is one of the few places in the Twin Cities that is open for ice skating. That's because it uses the same technology as an indoor hockey rink. Still, though, it's had to close a couple of times so far this season for maintenance after the rain. We just, we, we get calls left and right, and the, the, the frustration is there, but it seems like most of our residents and patrons are understanding. We're struggling. There's no doubt. We need to make more snow when we can yeah. to remain open. So if you are headed out to Highland, be sure to check their website first. That's because the hours can change week to week because, of course, of the weather. Mild winter also has canceled some staple events here in the Twin Cities, but others, too, are holding out hope that the show can go on. We'll talk more about that coming up in about 30 minutes. Yeah, this, this weather has just been wildly warm. All right, mm -hmm. Pauline, thank you. Another local business will temporarily close their doors tonight. Yeah, they need to raise money if they want to reopen late next month. Muddy Paws Cheesecake in St. Louis Park has been open for 30 years. They say they need to close because of financial hardships over the past few years. They're hoping it's just temporary, but it could be permanent. The store needs to raise at least $240,000 by January 20th. You can send your donations to Muddy Paws through Venmo. They'll also have a live telethon July, excuse me, January 18th and a last-minute attempt to raise money. A lawsuit against a Minnesota school district over the hazing of a teenager has been quietly settled. The parents of that teen say he was sexually assaulted by a teammate as part of a hazing ritual. That teammate later pleaded guilty to third-degree criminal sexual conduct. The parents sued the Proctor School District coaches and superintendent, claiming they all knew about the hazing. According to court documents, the confidential settlement was reached last Thursday. They were originally seeking $75,000 in damages. We've just learned the identity of the man who was killed while walking his dog Christmas Eve. Police say a driver hit 64 year old Stephen Wurz and his two year old German Shepherd Christmas Eve. This took place near Maryland Avenue and Park Street in St. Paul. Officers haven't made any arrests. A Minneapolis community is helping a neighbor after a devastating fire on Christmas that took something irreplaceable. As Kirsten Mitchell explains, there's a Christmas miracle hidden in the heartbreak. Yes. Randy Moyer thought she'd spend her Christmas Day with her three month old great granddaughter. But just after she arrived to the family gathering, she had to rush back home. Her house was on fire. Yeah. Her three dogs and a cat were inside, Jojo and Banjo in a kennel together. We pulled both of them out of the kennel. I started doing mouth to mouth on Banjo, the smaller one. And, and Joe doing... was already gone. But we tried to get him. Jojo was 17. She got him right after my grandpa passed away, so she wasn't by herself. In a way, that was kind of a big piece left from him that a family member had given to her. The other pets survived and are now recovering from their injuries. While Randy tries to figure out what's next without her home of 50 years. But if I would have been there, I might have saw the smoke right right away and been able to call. But you also could have been sleeping too, mm -hmm. and it never you would have never woke up from it. True. We just keep telling her we're grateful you weren't there. 
The fire and smoke damage was so bad, Randy says it may be a year before she's able to move back home. Meanwhile, the family is now out thousands of dollars from the vet bills. There's an online fundraiser, and neighbors have chipped in too. The holidays are supposed to be good. An unforgettable Christmas. Well, it was my great granddaughter's first Christmas. <laughs> For the wrong reasons. In Minneapolis, Kirsten Mitchell, WCCO News. Investigators are still trying to figure out how the fire started, but Moyer says firefighters told her a stove burner may have been left on accidentally. It then sparked a plastic cutting board above it and started the fire.